You know, we've come here year after year and say thank you. Thank you for those who have given their lives in the line of duty protecting our communities. And just as importantly, thank you to those who continue to serve. And year after year, those words seem so inadequate to express our gratitude for what they do for us and what they have done for us. When you hear an officer who has saved a life or one who has taken a dangerous felon off the street, risking his or her own life, their common response is, we're just doing our job. When a family mourns the loss of a police officer killed in the line of duty, the common response is, he or she was prepared to give his or her life. They were just doing their job. So when an officer becomes incapacitated, unable to perform, or unable to do his or her job, or when a family loses a loved one, a police officer killed in the line of duty, let's make sure that we just do our job. Our job of remembering their sacrifices, making sure that they have the resources and the comfort and the support to continue on, that their children can grow and develop to their fullest potential, so that eventually, maybe they'll follow in the footsteps of their loved one and just do their job. We must take the time to remember all those we lost and honor their service by also recognizing those that continue to serve. The 179 NOWAC officers, as well as the thousands throughout Connecticut and the hundreds of thousands throughout the country that continue to give their all every day. Today, please join me in honoring all those who are paid to do a very difficult job and to those who chose a career which led them to making the ultimate sacrifice, as well as all those that have the courage to put on the badge each day. They are true heroes. Borrowing the motto from the Connecticut Police Memorial Foundation, I remind everyone to never forget. So while we cannot change the past, we can take steps to shape the future. In addition to continuing our work to assist our brother and sister officers who may need our assistance, we also need to continue to honor those that we have lost. This year we decided that it was time to add to our Norwalk tradition. So this year, in addition to including these officers in today's remembrance and assuring that we include them in future years, I am proud to also dedicate a shadow box to formally remember each of them. I would like to ask retired officer Mike Price to come forward. Mike designed this shadow box as a permanent fixture to be added to our lobby. The box contains the badge numbers of Sergeant Richard Walsh, Officer Willard Miley, Officer Larry Ralston, Officer Gary Palmer, Officer Paul Stevens, Officer Matthew Morelli, Officer Henry McGallis, and Officer Kenneth Cerulli. They will forever be included in our remembrances, and I want to thank you, Mike, for what you did here. It's long overdue. I've had the great privilege to work with law enforcement officers during the 18 years that I have been a federal prosecutor. That has included local police officers. The federal government here in Connecticut is extremely fortunate to have the support of local police departments. You serve honorably on many of our task force, and as we almost always comment, you often carry the heaviest water. And that includes our Safe Streets Task Force, our Joint Terrorist Task Force, and more recently, our Human Trafficking Task Force, and our statewide initiative to address the opioid epidemic. Every day when you get up and go to work, you don't know what danger awaits you. A traffic stop, the execution of a search warrant, a domestic violence call could be routine, or not, but you do it anyway. You do it for us. Day in and day out, you are our guardians, and you act without hesitation, placing others before self. It is said that the price of freedom is constant vigilance. You pay that price on our behalf. 
Police work attracts a special breed of people. People who run toward <coughs> gunfire and chase armed felons. People of exceptional courage who deliver quietly and humbly. You're drawn to this work, as President John F. Kennedy said, not because it's easy, but because it is hard. Nationwide, about every three days, a police officer leaves his or her home to go to work and never returns. On any given day, we can be faced with a life-changing scenario and have only a moment to make a decision that will affect the course of our lives forever. Each day we come to work, we have no idea what we'll face during our shift, what we'll be asked to do, or what we'll have to overcome. The only certainty is that whatever happens, we as police will be called upon to deal with it. This is a challenge that we willingly and very proudly accept. It is our role in the world to protect and to serve everyone. While others flee for safety, we run towards crisis. We risk everything, our bodies, our minds, and our overall well-being so that others can be safe and protected. Through an entire career, we do it hour after hour, day after day, year after year, and decade after decade. A policeman's career is filled with days upon days of long hours of shift work, where the routine calls for service are interrupted by moments of human crisis and tragedy. We never know when it's going to happen, but when that bell rings, we respond, and we do so together as brothers and sisters. Most who wear the uniform know that as police, it's what we experience together that binds us so closely together. The National Law Enforcement Monument in Washington, D.C. stands as a powerful testament to the tremendous debt we owe those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in preserving our peace and safety. Indelibly etched on the National Law Enforcement Memorial walls are the names of nearly 20,000 law enforcement officers who have made the ultimate sacrifice. The names of four NOAA police officers are engraved on those walls. Frank Stratton, Cheryl Gordon, Nicholas Farah, and Marco Carius. As we commemorate our fallen heroes and reflect upon their legacies, we are reminded that the safety of our community and of our country at large comes at a terrible price. And while no words, no ceremony, and no salute can ease this burden, we must honor their sacrifice. The most fitting tribute we can pay to our fallen brothers and sisters is to continue on performing the job that they died doing. In the face of unpre unprecedented challenges in our nation, our law enforcement officers continue to answer the call to duty with courage, compassion, professionalism, and perseverance. Those are the values that define our mission. With that, I thank you again for joining us today in honoring the fallen and in keeping their memory alive. May God bless the law enforcement officers that we have lost, those who have retired, and those who continue to serve. Thank you.